Good morning and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. We've got quite a few projects going on on the homestead right now, but probably the biggest is the remodel of this 2001 Fleetwood Mobile Home. It is an extra house on the property. It's really our, I guess you'd call it a guest house, and we're working on the guest bedroom today. Today, the project is all about flooring. We've got some laminate flooring that's down in the living room. We're not really thrilled about laminate for a living room. It's much too heavy traffic area, but it'll work great here in the guest bedroom. So the plan is to pull it up from in there, put it down in here. So setting the flooring is fairly easy. You can go by Lowe's or Home Depot and find a kit that will have these wedges. It'll have a bar that you can use to knock against the edge so that you can get things to fit tightly. And there's usually also a bar that will allow you to push things from the end once you get up tight to the wall. But you just set some wedges on your starting wall. Once those wedges are set, you can square everything off to that. This is a small room of flooring and we're gonna have it on top of this uh, foam paper underlayment. So it ought to move around fairly easily if we find we're getting off square at any point. Should be a simple matter to move the whole floor around. And that may seem like a monumental task, but when we did the flooring in the depot, we had to start in a bedroom and then connect up with the dining room passing through a hallway because we didn't want any transitions. And it was substantially off angle when we got there. And we were able to move the entire floor by taking a two by four and cutting a small wedge down one edge of it and then pounding with a sledgehammer. We moved the entire flooring, spinning it to, to match up with the flooring in the dining room. So don't be too concerned on a small floor like this, you'll be able to make small adjustments even as you get to the far side of the room. When you're laying a laminate or a vinyl flooring or even hardwood flooring, one of the things you want to avoid is having all of your seams line up. A lot of times new DIYers will go and get a box of flooring, they'll start with a brand new piece at one end of the room, work their way to the other end, cut a small piece to fit in here and then start with another brand new board. That's gonna make sure that all the seams line up down the floor and it's not gonna expand and contract correctly. That's gonna allow the boards to separate, they'll pull apart, you're not gonna get it to set down correctly unless the seams are offset row to row. So the easiest thing to do is to make your cutoff at this end, then take what's left over and use that to start your next row. That will ensure that the seams don't line up, you'll get a nice offset. There's a couple of different ways to handle measuring this little piece that we need, we can of course use a tape measure. Looks like about four and three quarter inches, four and a half inches. And that's an accurate enough measurement. You don't have to be super accurate because you want to leave a gap at the wall anyway. So always cut it a little bit short rather than long. We will be coming back in with baseboards around the wall and that's going to cover any gaps that we have. And the gaps are there specifically to allow for expansion and contraction and to allow the floor to move. It's not going to be anchored down to the subfloor. One other way to do the measurement is to figure out which edge is going to be connecting up with this board. That would be this edge here. And then you want to flip that edge around backward. And then you can just push it up tight against the wall make a mark on the board and go cut it. That's going to give you a good enough measurement uh, because there is a tongue on the end of the board you're going to get enough of an offset that you'll get a distance away from the wall. So I'm going to get this one cut and we'll continue with the next row. 
You want to take your time and do each one of these cuts very carefully. It's very easy to cut the wrong edge of a board and once you do, it's really, well, it can be useless. You've got lips on both ends of the board, which means the board is useful on one side of the room or the other side of the room. If you end up trimming off the ends of the board, then everything that's in the middle becomes useless. If you don't have this locking mechanism to hold the row together, it's not going to stay together well. Uh, so you don't want to use those that are double dead-ended, my wife and I call it. You've got a left-hand edge and a right-hand edge with this lip always facing out. So creating a shorthand communication of left hand, right hand, and having an understanding between you and your work partner will go a long way to making sure you don't miscut these. In this case, we are gonna to have to trim this board. It is too long to fit into the space, but it's important to remember to always flip the board over before you mark your cut. If you don't do that, you'll end up cutting the wrong edge. So we have the board cut to size. Now all we're gonna do is fit it into place. You're gonna find it difficult at first to figure out how these tongue and grooves work. Each flooring is a little bit different. This one seems to work best if you get the ends of the boards to match up. And then by lifting up the entire row, get enough of an angle to be able to slide this board back. Be careful not to lift it up too high. You don't want to disconnect a tongue and groove further down the row. But once these go together, they should lay nice and flat. And you can begin to see it's not that difficult to make sure that these seams don't line up. As long as you start the next row with your cutoff from the previous row, you're always going to have an offset. We are picking up flooring out of the living room and moving it here into the bedroom. So a lot of these are already cut for us. So we're just picking and choosing among the pieces that are cut uh, to make sure we keep this offset going. And this is one area that you're gonna need to work on. Stick these together. You probably can't see it from the camera, but there is a slight gap here. And the gap is being caused because these boards aren't aligned perfectly on the very first row. Try to correct this with a hammer. So that's what these little plastic blocks are for. You never want to set it on the lip. You want it on the flooring itself. And then you can just give a light tap with the hammer. And there we go. Close that seam right up. Always make sure before you start pounding that you do have some wedges stuck against the wall. Otherwise, you're going to be driving that into the wall. Could damage the wall board, but it'll certainly knock your flooring off square. We're ready to start the next row. Always double check yourself. This is not getting together perfectly. There we go. Now you can see the value of the wedges. Uh, I was able to straighten out this row, which was a little bit crooked, by pounding on this row. And if I didn't have the wedges to push against, that would never happen. The wedges along the edges become a little less important as you move further and further down the room. Just really, I use those to get the rows started. Uh, once the flooring started, the rest of the rows tend to line up pretty easily.
the makers of this laminate flooring will tell you you don't need tools to install it. Don't believe them. Couple of taps with a hammer here and there are going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to making these seams fit tightly. What I'm looking for are these small places where the board is rising up a little bit. It just means that we're not seated completely. And this is definitely where having this block comes in real handy. Keep working it eventually it'll lock in place everything will lay down nice and flat if you don't take the time to do that when you go to set the next board remember you're going across joints in between the boards it's going to get really difficult to line up so you want to make sure that as you finish a row it's completely flat and level before you try to lay the next row let's get some more underlayment in here
So the doorway presents kind of an interesting problem because we have to cut a notch in a piece of flooring. Uh, typically, if people will look at this and they'll want to use a very full board. We're not going to do that. Sunshine's going to help us out with this. She's really good at doing these corners. Um, but we want to we want to make sure we're aligning the board up correctly. So this is the locking side that we want facing out. And all we need to do is trim off this section to make an L so that it fits all the way up snugly here. So what we want to do is first flip this over. And we can make a mark for the cut on this side. Now we want to make sure we get a good tight fit here. So we're going to walk the boards together. And that's going to show us where we need to cut to fit around the other wall. I'm just going to use my speed square. Get the line started on the back of the board. Use a straight edge to finish this out, and then we're cutting off the lip section here. Just use a circular saw or a jigsaw to cut out this section of the board, and it should slide right around the corner of the wall. So that's what the piece ends up looking like. Just a big L. We've got our locking edge facing into the room. We've got this edge ready to lock. What we got to do now is get it in place and lock it down. Hey, kid. You going to help me set the floor, huh? What do you think? If I got it right? If you pull permits on your project, you're going to have inspectors up in your business. Sunshine is our in-house inspector. <laughs> she makes sure we're getting it done right. If you're fortunate enough and all the measurements work out perfectly, then this register will fit halfway through a board, which makes it easier to cut. This one did not, so I did have to uh, cut a hole out of the middle of a board, which means you need a jigsaw. Just drill some holes at the corners, use your jigsaw to cut out the hole. Pretty straightforward. And just like that, we've got most of the floor in. We've got one more board left to lay here in the closet. We've got it ripped down to size. Let's see if it fits. Boom, done. Now all that's left to do is to set the trim around the edges of the room. We've got to put uh, baseboards all the way around the bottom. We're also going to trim the top because we've got that gap with the drywall that we can't fix. 
So we got a little bit more trim work to do. We'll probably get to that tomorrow. So yesterday we got the flooring put down here in the bedroom. Now it's time to get some trim up on the walls. Now Marty and I are really kind of classicists when it comes to trim, meaning we like it simple. Uh, we don't bother with miter cuts. We're not cutting anything at a 45 degree angle. We figured DAP is a great friend to any DIYer and we're not looking for perfection. We are going for the farmhouse look. It should be a little rough, a little rugged, uh, perhaps even a little chunky in places. So if you're really into that detailed work and you wanna see good, clean trim work, this is not the video for you, but we're gonna go ahead and put trim up the way we like to do it. Y'all may notice I'm only using a few nails to go along here. Marty will come back behind me and she'll use some dap to cover those nails up. And the more holes I put in the molding, uh, the more dap she's got to spread out. And those nails are gonna be more than enough to hold the molding on the wall. It's not like people are gonna be climbing on top of it. So that'll be sufficient. You can see we're using an MDF uh, trim board. If we were using oak or some other type of wood that we intended to stain, yes, I'd use a miter box and, or use the miter saw to cut a 45 degree angle and we'd match these corners up perfectly. But with this MDF, it's really hard to get those corners to match up perfectly. It's just as easy to go ahead and square everything off, use a little dap to fill the holes and gaps, and then paint the end of the board. Plus, I like that look. Yeah, Marty likes it, and it, it does give a much... Shaker. Yeah, it's more shaker, very rugged, kind of homesteading. So that's why we like it. So we've decided not to put up a closet door. We're just going to leave this open. It's only by convention that we put doors on closets to begin with. It is kind of a small closet, and this is a spare bedroom, so we're not going to bother with a door on this closet. But that does mean we need to trim out uh, all the edges of the door, both inside and out. So we're going to get a faceplate up on the inside, and then we'll work on getting some molding up on the outside surface. You can see the closet is starting to come together here. We have a really tight space up top, but it is wider than the baseboard and molding that we're putting around the edge of the ceiling. So we use these I don't know, decorative end caps to kind of make up the gap. We've got sort of a thinner piece of molding covering the inside lip of the doorway. So that gives us some interesting reveals around the edges there. Got everything sealed up around the bottom inside of the closet. All that's left to do is to cut that one piece that goes in up top. So I'm gonna take a quick measurement and go get that one cut. So we get a really nice finish around the edges of the door. It really does not need to have a door on the closet. We're really pleased with that look. We'll get some molding put up around the top of the wall now. And just like that, we've got 90% uh, of the room done. We still gotta get a door put in the bedroom. New blinds. Yeah, we need some new blinds up in here. May go with uh, some room darkening shades. We're looking at a couple of different options for that. We got all the molding up top and bottom. We've got the doorway framed out into the closet area. It's looking really nice. Put the shelves in the closet. Yeah, we still need a shelf in the closet and a hanging bar. And in case you were wondering about this weird speckled look on our paint, that is on purpose. And it's not in the paint, 
but we thought the room needed a little extra bling so we went with a fairly fancy light fixture it's an led fixture this doesn't need bulbs in it so you just wire it up directly to the power and boom you get this little extra bling in the middle of the room so there we go we've gotten this room to about 90 percent complete we've got a few more small projects to work on marty's going to go around with some damp and cover the nail holes do a little touch-up painting we've also got to paint the trim that we put in the corners where we had to rip some out in order to cover that gap uh, we're really pleased with the way this room has turned out it looks just as nice as the laundry room and it's finished at this point so we can move on to other parts of the house that's why we're putting together this one last video uh, just to give you the highlights of what we did to finish this room up if you do have any questions about any part of this project please do drop a comment in the comment section let us know what you're wondering about if there's any portion of the remodel that you're definitely wanting to see be sure to put that in the comments as well if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to do so. We do appreciate you joining us today. Hit that like button while you're subscribing. We'll see you next time. Sunshine is really thrilled to have her bedroom this close to being finished. She's already decided this is her space.